So I want to give you an idea about acceptance that um, my uh, people found very helpful. I said that vulnerability is sharing something that you're that if you were judged about it would hurt. The question comes, how would it hurt? And there's this idea of shame. And shame is a fundamental human emotion. It is perhaps the fundamental societal human emotion. Shame is, in many ways, the, the birth and the foundation of society. Human culture is built on this thing called shame. And shame, I'm going to differentiate shame from guilt. We can say that shame, in this understanding, is believing that there's something about my person, about my being, which is unlovable, wrong, broken, undeserving of love. Right? The shame is the, the idea that there's something wrong with my person that makes me unlovable, unworthy of love. Guilt, to contrast. Guilt is... I have done a behavior which goes against my own value system. Okay? If I participate in a behavior that goes against my own value system, I will feel guilt. And sometimes I'll take on somebody else's value system. People will say, you should have done that. Oh, I guess I should have done that. I feel guilty because I didn't do this thing I was supposed to do, or I did something that I'm not supposed to do. Right? So guilt is about our behaviors relative to some standard. Shame is about our being. Now, in our culture, we tend to get these two confused. We collapse them. Such that if I do something that's against my own values, that means I'm a bad person. Does this make, does this make sense? Not right there, so I'm going to say that again. If we do something against our own values, that means we're a bad person. Now, the fact is, these are two completely different issues. You can be a great person and make some really dumb choices. Right? As a matter of fact, I'm going to suggest that's pretty much our natural, <laughs> that's our natural state. <laughs> you know, we're mostly animal. We're, we're partly animal. Right? We're, we've got very, very strict rules that this rational level has created, very unique, you, this, this is good, everything else is bad. Right? Very limited amount of what we're, kind of what we allow ourselves to do. Most of the time we're falling short of that. So guilt is a natural, beautiful response that tells us, hey, you just violated your values. That's not smart. <laughs> There's a reason you value that. Clean that, excuse my French, clean that shit up. Make amends. Do what you need to to take care of this guilt thing because guilt is the great gift of our conscience. Now shame, on the other hand, is about our being. And I want to ask a question. By what standard would you ever judge a being as good or bad? Yeah, by what standard? And, and, and you say, by your own. Think about this for a moment. Who are you to determine the standard? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you can determine the standard, that means you know, you're presupposing that you're good, because only a good person can choose the standard. If I judge myself to be good, is that trustworthy? <laughs> right? I, I'm going to say that when, when, you, when you chase the shame rabbit hole, when you go down to the bottom, the only being, the only entity that could ever judge us, our person, our being, to be good or bad, is God, or divinity, or the ultimate goodness in you. Whatever, whatever you consider, like love, I don't know what you guys consider love to be, but whatever it is that has love be possible, whatever that is, is divine. Whatever it is that allows us to look at another human being and feel love and caring and to experience beauty and compassion and peace and wonder, like these are divine experiences. Whatever the source of that is, 
You know, let's say that you would call that God or whatever the higher power. I call it divinity. Whatever, that's the only thing that can judge you as a person to be good or bad. Does that make sense? That's the only authority that could do it. And every religious tradition says at bottom, God says you're good. Right? In the Christian tradition, Christ came along and said, check this out. I'm going to, be, I'm going to do a kind of funny Christ for you. Check this out. Right? You were born bad. Very, very bad. Original sin. I mean, not good. Bad. <coughs> but I'm here. Check this out. All you have to do is believe that I came to take your sins. And they're gone. And you're good. And you're back in goods, God's graces. I got it. I got your back. I'm here, bro. No worries. Right? I got you, right? Buddha says, look, you're already the Buddha. It's like trying to become enlightened. It's like trying to get a left foot. You already got it, man. You already got the, you already won the lottery. It's just a question of realizing that you already are that. To realize that who you are is and, and for atheists in the audience, whatever it was that caused existence to be, that principle that had atoms formed into molecules and molecules into cells and cells into organisms and organisms into an organism that could ask the question, how is it that atoms became molecules, became cells, became, like whatever... Whatever creative process that caused us to evolve, we is that. Our every cell, our every thought, our every desire comes as an expression of that. We are full participants in divinity. There's nothing we can ever do to lose that. And there's nothing we can ever do to gain that. Right? So this shame question is a deeply spiritual question question. For purposes of intimacy, it's important to just recognize that that question, am I good enough? Am I lovable? Am I worthy? Is just at the core of what it means to be a human being. And so when you're in a relationship with someone, the fundamental opening to love and intimacy is to say, you are good. You, your being, is good and lovable. You are universally and fundamentally innocent. You might have some really screwed up behavior. Right? You might do a whole range of things that I don't like. You might do some things that our society has decided don't work, and if you do them, we're going to lock you up and kill you. But your being, that baby that was born and went, ah, oh gosh, what's this? Right? That being is good. To the degree that you can say that in relationship through who you are. That uncollapses the shame and guilt. Being good, behavior, eh, good or bad. We don't know. Let's check it out. And when you can separate those out, you can then really begin to deal with what works and what doesn't work. When those are collapsed, when my being, my actions, good or bad, mean that I'm a good or bad person, then I can't afford to look at my actions. Because if it turns out that I did something bad, then I'm bad. And that's, I just can't feel that. It's just too big. <coughs> to be separated from God and love, is just, I can't feel it. And so we do whatever we need to in order to avoid that feeling. We get addictive, we get vindictive, we get aggressive, we leave, whatever's necessary in order not to feel that. So we separate those out and we say, you are good. Your being is not at question here. The only thing that's a question is the behavior. What are we going to agree on in behavior? 